So hello, everyone. Hello, hi. <clears throat> Good evening. So how is everybody? Good. So far, so good. Yes, Emily. And there is another syndrome, but uh, as you know, the Monday syndrome as well. Okay, everyone. So in our previous session, uh, we ended up seeing uh, most of the fields, how to create them uh, and how they function. And just about that time, we were about to start uh, the pick lists. But for the pick lists, uh, we will be learning uh, two new things today. As you all know, we already uh, created pick list and we used them. We created a uh, multi-select pick list. But uh, today we will be learning uh, how to create uh, global value sets. As you can remember, uh, for our pick list, generally we used our own uh, manual values. But this time we are going to be defining some values and we will be uh, storing them uh, in Salesforce. And later on, we will be available to call them as values. Uh, not only that, the second thing we will be learning is how to uh, create dependencies in between uh, those pick list fields. So for the other team, I created a much more complex one and we created that one, but actually since the data was too much, it was a little bit confusing. So I uh, cropped some parts and make it like this, uh, this will be a little more simpler. So we will be having uh, three pick lists. The first pick list will be the country. The next will be the state or province, whatever it's called uh, in Canada. I don't, I'm not sure about that one. And the cities. So our basic functionality will be like that. When we uh, go to uh, choosing the country, when we click on United States, we will be having its values or uh, we will be having the states, California and Texas. Uh, let's suppose we say we choose Texas, we will be having its cities like Houston, San Antonio and Dallas. So we will be doing one thing, but we will be learning two things in this uh, session. And what else are we gonna learn today? Uh, we will be also learning uh, about the other fields, which we haven't seen yet. I will be showing you the currency field. Uh, we will be talking about the time and date time uh, in Apex. We have seen this uh, today, but uh, in admin part also, we have 
uh, data and date time, which are very important. Uh, and later on, we will be seeing the other uh, fields that we haven't created and or we haven't checked, like the long text areas, the encrypted text areas, uh, and geolocation and percentage. Later on, we'll be talking about the limits about uh, the objects and the fields. Uh, and I'll be showing you if we can find time the, about the list views. And on Sunday session, uh, the joint session, we will be starting a new topic, which is also very important. Uh, it's about uh, uh, relationships. Let me show you. which fields we should be covering. Yeah, these fields, most of them, we have seen them. Uh, the other ones, which we haven't seen yet, we will be seeing today. But for the uh, relational uh, data types or this lookup relation and master detail relationship, we will be learning uh, this Sunday. And without learning this, we cannot talk about those as well because those are built on relationships, the roll-up sum summary and formula. Auto number, we have seen it, we already know, but these two subjects also depends on uh, seeing the relationships. So after we have seen the relationships or together with the relationships, we will be learning about the formulas and roll-up summaries. Okay. Do you have any questions about the previous session? Anything to ask? Uh, Esma, for this purpose, uh, you're asking for the previous subjects. Uh, you can uh, watch the recordings. We have recordings in LMS. And uh, if you have if you are having trouble uh, finding where LMS is, how to use it, uh, or if you're having some technical issues, you can ask the technical support for that one. We have a platform called LMS. In LMS, you can uh, find our previous uh, lessons as uh, video recording. So in that recordings, you can be seeing all of them. Okay. So this is your first time in here. So you never heard about Salesforce and other things. Okay, so you have, you'll be having a lot of recordings to watch. I think that will be three recordings each, uh, each about three hours. Uh, so when you find time, start from the beginning, the first one. Uh, I think you can uh, catch up with us like two or three days. Okay. And I'm sure you don't know any information about using the Salesforce right now. So I suggest you can watch this session uh, because if you don't know how to use the uh, Salesforce. Now your friends in this batch, they actually know uh, the basic parts, how to use it, how to create an object, how to create a field. So for this session, you maybe it's better for you to only watch. Okay. So let's start building this. Okay. Now, the first thing we will be doing uh, is we won't be creating the pick list. Let's first uh, define those uh, values in Salesforce as global value sets. So for this purpose, just open your uh, developer page. And from here, 
just write pick or pick list in the quick find. So when you write pick or pick list here, we have three options. We will be using the one on the bottom, which is pick list value sets. So click on pick list value sets. Uh, your screens should be empty. You shouldn't be having those because these are prepared in the previous session. So let me delete them as well. Oh, okay, they are being used. It's no problem. You should be, uh, yours should be empty. So let's click on new. Okay, what we are doing right now, we are actually creating the global value sets so that, as you can remember, let me open uh, the page which we're creating the pick lists. Let me use an object here. Let's say student. And if we're supposed to create a new pick list, we are clicking on new, right? So we were choosing pick list from here. And once we choose uh, the pick list, as you can see, uh, by default, it was bringing us something here. So for the values, it says use global pick list value set. But in our examples, we always choose the second option and we uh, write them here, right? As you can remember, our pick list was uh, written in, I think they were lectures or something. So we were writing art, music, or English as lectures. And we were, we were not using this one. So what we are learning is this part, my friends. So we are learning how to create global pick lists. So once we uh, created the pick list, we will be choosing from here. Okay, so let's give a label for our uh, global value set. So for the first one, it should be country. So let's say uh, global country. Let's say global country for the name. This name is up to you, but let's use this one altogether. So for the country, we have, let's see how many values. We have United States and Canada, right? So let's write them here, each separated with a line. Canada and United States. And after that, we can click on save. So here we created our first value set. You can click on the pick this value sets again, because we have two more global values to define. Again, we'll be clicking on new. So we created this part. Now let's create the value set for state. So let's call it global state. And for the states, we have four values here. Let's write them each separated with the line, California, Texas, we have Ontario and Quebec. And let's don't say save only, let's say save and new because we want to create another one after saving this. So click on save and new. 
So our third global value set will be this city. So let's call it global city. For the values, I prepared them beforehand. So I'll be copying them into Slack as well. So you can copy and paste them here. Okay, once you copy them here, click on save. So let's go and click the pick this value sets. So for in this session, we created these three, right? Now we created those three. So you should be seeing them in under pick list value sets. So are you able to see, see them all here? Global state, global country, global city. Okay, great. Okay, so far we have created our global value sets. Let's uh, create pick lists on an object. So let's go to object manager. Okay, let's use um, the student. Let's go to our student object and let's click on that one. So can somebody remind me how do we create fields here? Exactly. Fields and relationships. Great, great guys. So for the new, after we select the fields and relationships. And new, yes, exactly. So let's create our pick lists here. So the first one will be the country right so let's click on new and let's choose pick list from here and click on next so let's call this country field name will be country okay this is where we are calling our value set. So this is default mark. So in this list, we should be finding our global country. This lesson we created this one. So we should 
we're choosing global country here. So at that moment, in this pick list, we already assigned our values. The country values are now assigned to this pick list. So we don't have to write them again. And then let's click on next. For the following two pages, you can click on next and let's click on save and new because we will be creating another pick list. Okay. Now we created the global pick lists and now we are creating the pick list itself for the first one. We are okay. Now let's create the pick list for states. Again, I'm choosing pick list here. Jandan, you were in the previous session, I guess, right? So Salesforce doesn't uh, let you create duplicate fields. That's why you're having them. So you can try this on a different object. Don't use the student. We have teacher, right? So try them only in teacher. We can't give same names on value set, but different value sets can have same field name. Um, and I, I couldn't figure out what you're trying to ask, Gulin, but uh, for the same page, the error Jandan is getting is because we already created the fields in the previous session. Uh, and I deleted them before this session. So that's why I'm able to create the fields. We call them country, city, and uh, state as well. So Jandan is currently creating the same field in the same object. So it's not possible. You cannot create two fields with the same name. For the global value sets, you can also, uh, you cannot uh, give same name for the two value sets. You should be always uh, giving them a different name. You cannot have two city as a global value set. Okay, for this field, let's call it state. And this time, we will be choosing global state. Okay, let's click on next. Next. And let's say save and new. We have one more to go. The state pick list is okay. Now we have city left, right? So let's create another pick list. Yes, yes, you can do, Emily. Just uh, use the same logic as file names. As you know, you cannot uh, give uh, same file names if the, uh, if the files are in the same folder like Word or any other uh, application that you're using, you cannot use the same uh, file name. Uh, it's the same here. So by adding a one or an underscore, you can create the other one. So let's choose pick list again. This time, let's call it city. And from the global value set, should be global city. Okay, let's click on next. Next and save. All right, let's give it a 
check. So we have city, country, and state, right? And their data type is all pick lists. Okay, now, so from this part on, uh, you don't have to do it with me. I'm going to be showing you something. Let's go to our application and let's go to student. And let's try to create a new uh, record here. So let's click on new. As I said, you don't have to do this. You, you, you should be only watching this part. Okay, let's, these are required fields. I need to be entering something here. So, okay, now this is our part. This is the part we have created, right? So let's give it a try. Actually, from the first look, it seems that there are no dependencies because in our logic, before choosing anything for country, these two should be inactive, right? This shouldn't be uh, showing me the values, but we haven't created the dependencies in between. So for Canada, I can choose a state of United States, Texas. For Texas, I can choose something from Canada. So basically, uh, we're not done yet. There are no dependencies in between those fields. Now we will be doing this. So this is not the way we are asking for it to work. Okay. So let's save this or save it as it is. Okay. So for creating fields as you will remember we are using fields and relationships, but we were only using this functionality. We were only using this tab to create fields. Now we will be learning also, there's another word here, relationships. Now, what we are going to do is to create relationships. So you all uh, can come to this page. You will be choosing the student from the object manager, or let me guide you through from the setup. Choose our application, it's Educa. <clears throat> I'm sorry, yeah. Sorry, uh, no need to choose Educa. Just enter object manager. And find our object, which was student. Which part, Jandan? The new record, okay. Let's create any, another new report here on the student. Now, now current time on the student, right? So if I click on student, uh, how can I create a new record here? From here, right? Any other place? Also from here, right? New student, or I can use this. Either I can use this button or I can use this plus sign under the students tab. Yeah. So, okay, let's click on one of them. So in this part, I haven't done anything. I just check whether the pick list is working as it should be. So I choose Canada. 
but I won't be able to choose Texas or California. When I choose Canada, it should be showing me only Ontario and Quebec. So for this purpose, I show this screen. So you don't have to create a, a record for this one. Okay. So let's go back and let's click on fields and relationships on student object. And once you are lost in Salesforce, you can always check this part. It says in setup, your object manager, you're in object manager and in under object manager, you're in student object. Okay, so for the fields and relationships, while we're creating a new field, we were clicking on new, right? This time we will be creating some dependencies in between those uh, pick lists. So click on the field dependencies. And this part is important. Let's do it together, right? So all of you, I'll be waiting for all of you. Just come to fields and relationships and click on the uh, field dependencies button. Okay. Yeah. I guess everyone's here. So let's click on new. Okay, let's stop here and let's go back to our uh, Excel sheet. So in this case, we have three pick lists, country, state, city. So if we want to if let's say if we choose United States, we should be having California and Texas, which means the country field should control the state field, right? Or from the reverse, if we look at the other way around, the state should be dependent on the country. So right now we cannot create dependencies for three of them. We can only create dependency for the two. So we will be creating the dependency between the country and the state first, okay? So keep that in mind and let's go back here. Now it's asking us what will be the controlling field? So our first controlling field should be exactly the country. So let's choose country here. And the dependent field should be the state. Choose state. As you can see here, uh, for the states, there are two situations for the states. In this case, it will be the dependent one. But later on, it will be a controlling field as well. We'll see that. Okay, once you selected this one, just click on continue. Jana, uh, I think you forgot to create the pick list field, maybe. Maybe you both have. Uh, You both didn't create the pick list fields, maybe. Or maybe it could be the naming. Okay, let's proceed. Now, we first we choose country as our controlling field, so it 
brought us the country and the dependent field is brought here as well. So it says for Canada, uh, what are the values for Canada here? So in order to do that, I'm clicking on the control button and I'm not taking my finger from the control button. It should be pressed. I'm choosing Ontario and Quebec for Canada. Okay. So still my finger is on the control key. I'm clicking on California, Texas for United States. All right. So once you selected those values, just click on include values. And it should be like this. For Canada, the values of Canada should be highlighted in yellow. And for United States, the California and Texas should be highlighted in yellow as well. So I'll be waiting for you to finish this part as well. I'm sending done. If, if it is done, just click on my message, give it a tick, finished, oh, okay. Mr. Sadek, thank you for joining. Thank you. Okay, Janna. Uh, you're in this page, right? And are you seeing uh, the Canada and the United States here and their uh, respected values? Can you see the respected values, Janna? So what exactly you're seeing on this page? The same page without the values. Okay, we'll uh, get back to you, Jandan, uh, because uh, actually now we're in the middle of the process. Maybe I'll be doing another example for this one. Okay. So once we have chosen those and highlighted those, let's click on save. Now we have created the dependencies in between the country and the state. For these two, our dependency is created. Now, this time around, we should be doing same for state and city, okay? In this case, the state will be the controlling field and the city will be the dependent field, right? Okay. So again, we should be clicking on field dependencies. Good, Jandan. I think you fixed it. Kasim, you already finished states depart as well. Great. Okay, let's 
to it. Again, we'll be clicking on new. This time we should be choosing state and the city. So which one is the controlling field? State, right? Good. And the dependent field will be the city. Click on continue. Now, this time we should be doing the previous process for this fields as well. So for California, we should be choosing its cities. San Diego. San Diego, Los Angeles, San Jose. Okay. So while choosing, don't forget to click on the control button for Texas, Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio. Okay, for Ontario, let's check here. Toronto, Brampton, Hamilton. Toronto, Brampton, and Hamilton. For Quebec, it is Montreal, Ottawa, and Sherbrooke. I'll be keeping the screen open so you can do exactly the same. So once I completed selecting, them I'll be clicking on include values. So when you finish them, just click on the done message I sent to Slack. Okay, six. And click on save once you finish that part. Should I skip this screen or is anybody using it right now? Okay, let's click on save. Okay, good, nice one. Now, once we saved it, in the fields and relationships, also there is a column here saying controlling fields. And from the controlling fields, we can see our first controlling field was state, right? And our second controlling, uh, sorry, I'm repeating in that. The first one was the country and the second one was the state. Okay, let's give it a try right now. Let's Go to your student object. If you were there previously, just refresh the page. Okay. Let's try to create a new record here. Okay. As you can see here, uh, also check yours as well. This how it should be functioning. As you can see here, only the country pick list is active. The rest of them, the state and the city are inactive because it's depending on the previous one, the controlling field. So let's choose Canada. Okay, once I choose Canada, the state is now active and it should be showing me the 
uh, states of Canada. So yes, Ontario and Quebec. Let's choose Quebec. For the Quebec, I should be having its cities like this, Montreal, Ottawa, and Sherbrooke. And also, you will be noticing that there is some uh, type of a note that is written under the field, it says, we have all dependencies. So if you click on them, any of them, it will be showing you the dependencies. So basically it says, uh, these three fields are dependent on each other. So did it work for you as well? Great. Good, John. Okay, guys. Now, we learned two things up to this point. We learned how to create a global value set and how to use, that, use those global value sets to create a pick list. Uh, so we don't have to manually enter the values. We just call the global value sets. And the second and most important thing, we learn about the relationship, which is a, a dependency type of relationship. Uh, so we uh, gave an order. Uh, uh, we created a design that uh, each field uh, should be uh, relying on the previous one or the succeeding one should be controlled by the first uh, field. Do you have any questions up to this point or uh, uh, do you have anything in your minds, anything you are wondering about this subject? Because in the other session, uh, we had to go through another example for this one. But actually their first task was like, not like this. We had three countries for each, for each country I uh, created three states. So it was a little bit confusing uh, while you're creating values, uh, choosing the values for each controlling field. Maybe from that, I'm not sure, but later on we have done a very simple uh, example and it was understood. Uh, Kasim, actually, the uh, let's say the enterprises or the companies that are using Salesforce generally they store some uh, global value sets based on their uh, type of or based on their industry, maybe. So let's say if it's an e-commerce company, yes, uh, they are using, they should be using uh, a value set, uh, set structure like that. So it depends on the company. If they are, if they are in need of uh, using global value sets, maybe for the products they are, uh, producing something and don't think of it like as a location let's say they are uh, retail companies and they are selling it online and maybe for the country they will be having uh, the type of product let's say electronics jewelry clothing or something and under that one maybe it's for uh, the gender for the male female and maybe after that one, there is another uh, categorization, like let's say uh, it could be dependent on uh, other uh, features of the product. So 
this shouldn't be don't think of it uh, as locations it could be used for any other uh, if you have some uh, basic fields and if you have some sub categories under that one you can use this structure yeah emily uh, as well zip code also as well like color or sizes yeah i mean in as i said in general if you have some main categories and if they have some uh, three uh, three type of subcategories so you can use this kind of structure okay then i think we don't have any questions it's good so with one example, you all understand this, right? Okay, for Vesal and Sata, it's done. It's working, I guess. Okay, we have another channel as well. Okay, there are no questions there. Great, so let's move on with our slides. So actually, first we have done the, the practice parts. Now we'll be seeing its theory. For the pick lists, uh, we have two types, right? Uh, in the first example, it's the pick list that we used here. Also, uh, there is a dependency created here. There is a dependency in between the region and the zone. The region uh, controls the zone here, and also, we have another uh, type, which is multi-select. We use this in our uh, previous sessions. We use it for the lectures, right? For the lectures, uh, we created multi-select pick list. And at this point, let me ask you a question. Uh, now, if we're going to be creating uh, dependencies in between those pick lists, can we use the multi-select pick list? What do you think? What is your opinion? Nihan says nope. If you disagree with Nihan, just say yes. Okay, Ikra says, I think we can. Just uh, think of it and just think the logic we're using, creating those dependencies. And let me know if you think we can do it with the multi-select pick list. OK. The rest uh, have no comments, I think. Emily says, we can. John says, I think yes. Not sure. Like filtering. OK. Without further ado, we cannot use it. So the reason why we cannot use it is in the controlling field that uh, there should be some strict specifications, strict uh, things. So for Canada, we, we, we are in here, for Canada, we are seeing its zones, right? But let's say if this was a, a multi-select pick list and I choose Canada, United States, or maybe a different country, so, the dependent field should be confused or it shouldn't be doing its actual job. It should be depending on one thing. So in this case, 
multi-select pick list is not a good idea for controlling a field. Okay. But let's say if this multi-select was at the end of your tree. So let's say from the tree, I mean, uh, let me draw it here. Let's say this is your first pick list and your second pick list depends on this one. And let's say this is the last pick list. Okay, let's say country, state and city. For the last one, yes, you might use the multi-select pick list because it's only a dependent field, but you cannot use this multi-select pick list not in between, not at the top, because those both are also controlling fields. So in cities, yes, we can use it. We can use it. Now, in our example, we, we were able to use it for the cities. So other thing we learned, we cannot use multi-select pick lists as controlling fields and Let's see their limitations for the single pick list. We can write up to thousand values. And for each value, we can only enter up to 255 characters. I mean, even this is a huge number for me because for each pick list, they will be like 225 characters. Okay. So Multi-select pick list, we can uh, define up to 500 values. And the same limitation is also, also applies here. It's 255. And users can select up to 100 values at a time on a record. It means we can use dependency for the last one. Uh, actually, Nihan, what we have said is we can use the multi-select at the end. So multi-select pick list can be, uh, can only be a dependent fields. So if there is any other fields beneath the uh, city, let's say, in our example, we cannot use the multi-select. Okay, for multi-select, uh, it can never control a field. So it should be at the end of uh, the line, or let's say at the bottom of the tree of our structure. Okay. So we have also another type, uh, which we call the standard and custom, which we are used to that one, right? From the objects, we know of this. If it is provided by uh, Salesforce, we call them standard pick lists. And if we created the pick lists, they are custom pick lists. Okay. So for the custom pick lists, we know them. They are divided into two the single pick list and the multi select pick list. So for both of those, we can use values even value sets or global value sets. From the value set, I mean, the uh, as you can remember, we were entering them manually, or we can uh, define them as global value sets, which we have done in this very session. And later on, we can call and use those global sets. So for other features, uh, let's see. Add remove from page layouts. Yes, we can remove each and every kind of standard pick list from our page layouts. Delete from your org. For standard pick lists, or let me say uh, this will be true. Anything named standard on Salesforce, uh, it's nearly impossible to delete them. Uh, I don't want to be 100% because for the objects, yeah, we cannot. For the uh, pick list, we cannot. Uh, I'm sure for most of the things, if they are standard, they cannot be deleted from your org. But for the rest of them, yes, we can delete them. Set a default value for 
standard pick list, custom pick list, or custom multi-select, it doesn't matter. We can choose a default value. Um, I, as I remember, we made a, an example for this one. As you can remember, uh, we said, let's say our institution is only hiring teachers who knows English. So in that case, each and every teacher that we're going to be creating uh, on that object, uh, once we clicked on new, the English should be uh, selected as default. Use a, use a formula for a default value. For standard pick list, we don't have this feature, but for the custom pick list and custom select multi pick list, uh, we can use this. So we, what does that mean? So we can uh, use a formula for the default, uh, def uh, default value. And can we select multiple values? Uh, this is very obvious. The two of them, no. And this is actually called multi. So can add values via apps or API? Uh, yes, we can add values even in standard pick lists. Can they be restricted except the standard pick list? Yes, they can be restricted, but you cannot restrict uh, the standard pick list. So can be dependent pick list? We talked about this right now uh, for the standard pick lists. Uh, they cannot be dependent fields. They can only be controlling fields. Uh, for the rest of them can be dependent fields. Yes, Emily, we can make the last step as multi-select. But not uh, think of it as our example. In our example, we created something about locations, right? So in locations, there won't be something like that. Uh, when you choose a country, you should be choosing state. Uh, and later on, you should be choosing a city, actually, because we are pinpointing the address, right, for choosing those ones. Maybe later on, we should be choosing the district or the zip code or something. But for other examples, yes, we can do that. For address, I think it won't be uh, practical. We can do it. There is no limitation, but it won't be practical. All right. Um... Okay, let's go on. Um, we already discussed about those quickly. Let's go over them. Controller field can be a standard pick list, custom pick list. And we haven't given an example for this one, but even a checkbox can be a controlling field. So, Let's say in our example, um, there is another layer on the top. What can it be? Let's say if there was a checkbox called is address available. Let's say there's a checkbox on the top of that. So if this checkbox is not activated, the rest will not be working. So we can uh, also use checkboxes as controlling fields. Should we do it as an example for the for our uh, for our example that we have done right now or did you understand uh, the concept it could also be used as a controlling field okay 
Beisad says, yes, please. Okay, let's try to do that as well. Let's go back to the object manager. Currently, I'm in the object manager. Let's create a div field on student. And let's make it a checkbox. And let's say, as stated here, let's say, is address available? Is address available? And it should be unchecked. I'm clicking on next, next, and save. Right now, we have a checkbox in our page. Let's create a dependency for that one as well. So I'm clicking on field dependencies and I'm clicking on new. This time, as you can see here, it also lists the checkbox here. So I'll be clicking on is address available. So whom should I be uh, relate this to? Which, which field? Exactly, it should be the country, right? So once I choose this, it will be con uh, the country will be available and the rest will go on. All right, so I'll be choosing country. I'm clicking on continue. Let's go to our page and let's give it a try. First, give it a refresh. Let's create a new record. Student. Okay. So actually, I think there is something wrong with the. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, we haven't defined, uh, sorry, I just skipped this part. So if it is checked, what should be active? So both Canada and United States should be active, right? So I'm saying include values. So we, since we missed that part, it's not working. So I included uh, the Canada and United States for the checked, st uh, checked state. So. I'm saving, let's refresh and retry. Okay. Okay, it should be like this. Actually, don't, uh, never mind about the page layout. Actually, we should be placing it on top of country. So as you can see right now, all of them are inactive, but once I click on is address available, there you go. The country will be listed and our other fields will be working. Okay, because we have some required fields here, right? So is it clear right now? Uh, we will be coming to those. It's an, it's an different uh, topic we will be seeing, Ivan. It's, it's not a uh, simple uh, task, uh, I mean topic. It has some elements in that one. So we have it as a different session or part of a session. I'll be showing you how to uh, change the page layout, even how to change the look, uh, how to change the buttons, how to change the tabs, how to create components, all we'll be seeing uh, one by one. So we're on the 
crawling stage. We are learning about the fields. We learned about objects. We learned about the tab. We learned about app. And now we today we we will be finishing everything about the fields. And in our next session, we will be starting to learn the relations in between the objects. And once we learn that, we will be moving on from those. On my page, country is on the bottom. Be just because, Ivan, maybe you created that field later on, because it's going in the sort of creation, I guess. So the last created one will be shown at the bottom. Can we arrange the location of is available? Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, Emily. Actually, we can arrange everything. Now, this is not our topic today, but we will be seeing this page. We will be learning about this page. So as you can see here, is address available is here, right? So I can easily move it here and I can save it. And let's give it another try. As you can see here, I changed the page layout. I just moved it. It was actually a simple issue. It was only a, a drag and drop and I put it on top, but we will be seeing about those. Uh, it's, a, it's a whole uh, different uh, topic and issue we will be talking about. How to create page layouts, uh, how to uh, sometimes your uh, records can be uh, utilized for different page layouts depending on your uh, business procedures let's say you have two users one is dealing with the government agencies the other one is dealing with the private customers or clients so for each of them, you can change uh, the page layout. Even you can change the visibility of fields, but these will be on the next stage, all right? And curiosity is always good. So you know what I can uh, recommend you, you can uh, use your sandbox orgs, like the trailhead, you can, uh, work in those playground orgs, you can uh, try, uh, let's say you're curious about the page layouts, just uh, go to your playground and do anything you like. Uh, don't worry about uh, or don't think about uh, disrupting anything or uh, making a mistake there because uh, they are playground orgs. So it's not important. You can give. Uh, you can try everything there, but don't uh, try the things uh, on your current org that we are using. Actually, it's not uh, also a big issue. But let's do not uh, disrupt the form that we're creating here. But you can, as I said, in playground you can do anything you want. Let's say you're wondering about what this button is doing or what this tab is doing. Just give it a try from there. And Salesforce also has guides on each page, which can help you uh, 
generally those help pages uh, tells you about the uh, basic functionality of that page and there are lots of uh, plenty of sources uh, on internet and in, on salesforce page about the help you can try and learn things as well all right how to create playground uh nihan you have trail trailhead account right okay let me show quickly also for the ones who doesn't have an idea about creating the playgrounds first you need to log in to trailhead all right you just click on your picture here and here is an option says hands-on orgs and from here you can create your playgrounds you can create uh, you can press on that create play ground button and you should be having a random name you can choose it uh, you choose uh, to change it to whatever you like let's say you you will be using this in future maybe for the project lessons or you can write the project and the project name here and once you click on create it will be creating any playground for you it's taking like sometimes based on the internet traffic it's sometimes taking five minutes sometimes 10 minutes so you will be having your playground listed here so in order to use it you are clicking on launch all right okay So we were here, so we learned that checkbox can also be a controller field. For dependent fields, we have only custom pick list. And as we discussed, yes, we can use multi-select pick list as dependent fields at the end of those uh, trees, dependency trees, you can use multi-select pick lists. Um, we have three minutes before the break, so let's go. So again, standard pick list cannot be dependent, and multi-select pick list cannot be controller. Okay. So this is basically resem uh, showing resemblance to our example. In our example, we have. Uh, countries, states, and cities. And this one, it's a two-tier type of dependency. There is only country and city. It's actually easier than the one we have created today. Uh, there is only countries and their respective cities here. Okay. Also, there are some limits to be mentioned. So for custom fields for uh, for an object, for the for each edition, the, these are the limits. Okay. So for the we are using the developer edition. That means, let's say for the student object, we cannot create more than five hundred fields. In the same object, in the very same object, we can only create uh, five hundred objects. We cannot exceed this. So for other editions, it's different. And let me show you also a part here since we talked about them. So let's say we are in student object, right? We are in setup, object manager under student. And for this limits, I think we were available to see them here. Yeah, as you can see, there is one. link here saying object limits so it actually shows the current usage so as you can see here we haven't used anything on student object only for the custom fields 
it says you have 500 limit, but and you used only 12, which means you used only 2% of the limit. Okay. So the limits can also be seen from the object. Okay. Ah, okay. Actually, it was showing it the same place that I show you right now. So it shows you the current usage. Okay. So we are done about, we are, we completed the pick lists. Uh, I'll be giving you a, a 15 minutes of break. And if you have questions, you can think about the, your questions and I'll be answering them. Uh, later on, we'll be moving on to create other fields and then we'll be wrapping up everything and we'll be finishing those fields uh, subject, except the ones that I told you, the formula and the relationships, they depend on each other. We will be learning them in the weekend session. So guys, let's take a breathing. Let's take a break for 15 minutes. I'll be seeing you in 15 minutes.
So hello, everyone. Are we all back from the break? Great. Okay, then. Before date and time, let's first uh, talk about the currency. I think I already created one. A currency here, let me check. Okay. So I created a field called monthly field. Let me create it again. Okay, now I'll be creating a currency field. I'm choosing the data type as currency and let's call this again, the same monthly fee. So while you're creating the currency field, you are also asked about the length. From the length, you should be understanding the number of digits. So let's say in our case, it shouldn't be more than three. Also, you can define the decimal places for that one. Let's also say two decimal places. So the fees can not be always integer numbers. Sometimes they'll be decimals when you apply some discounts, or let's say if you're applying some raise. Okay, then the next thing we'll be doing is just saying next, next and save. Okay, let's see how does this work. from the app launcher. Let's go to student. Let's try to create a new record here. Okay. So let's complete the required fields. This is, I think this part was not required, so okay. So for the monthly fee, let's say two, let's say 200. And let's click on save. Okay. Now, as you can remember, I just said 200, but it is showing that field with the currency here. So this currency is, let's move and find uh, where it is located in your settings. Just click on your profile and then click on settings. So once you're in settings, just click on the one above saying advanced user details. So while you, you are on this page, as you can see, my currency is set as USD dollars. So I can change it by clicking on edit. I can scroll down to find the local settings. 
And from here, I can change it to a different currency. There is also another setting here, but don't use that setting at the moment because there is no returning back once you activate that one. It's the page called company information. Uh, let's click on setup. Uh, from the quick find, just write company. Okay, let's check your cases as well. Now, uh, if you cannot see them, uh, Nihan and Emily, plus Mehmet Akif, yeah. Just come to this page. Uh, from setup, you will be writing company in the quick find. It's under company information, yes. So click on the currency setup. And from here, you can enable this. Advanced Currency Management. Okay, once you enable this one, also you can uh, activate different currencies by adding uh, clicking on the new here. So you don't have the currency tab. All right. Did you enable this one and refresh your page? Just first come here, manage currencies, and you should be enabling this advanced currency management.
Kedan. Let's go from the start. Just come to this company information and you, you're saying you cannot see currency setup. Okay, try, as, try something new. Let's write currency here uh, in the quick find. Setup quick find currency. Can you see that manage currencies? So who can see this? Is there anybody who can see manage currencies? Sounds strange. That's strange, actually. So you are using your uh, developer orgs, right? Not the uh, playgrounds. Okay, let's go from here again. Click on settings. <clears throat> so in company information you cannot also see it right okay yeah i just asked all of you to enable the uh same uh, setting with Emily. I thought you were clicking on that one. And since you uh, also, you cannot see the option. So click on this multiple currencies. So Emily, you can't see it right now, right? Great, okay. Emily already tried to, trying to, Create currency types. Okay. So everyone, uh, now you should be seeing managed currencies and company information as well. 
And from here, you can activate new currencies. And here, as you can see, there are a lot of different currencies. If you're using them, you're going to be choosing that one and you will be giving it a conversion rate. You don't have to do this. Uh, this is only to show you the place because we won't be using multiple currencies. Okay, let's say 2.5 and let's save it. So as you can see here in my org, I have four different currencies. And here is their conversion rate based on my default uh, currency. So that means for $1 for British pound, let's say it says 1.5. So $1 should be shown as $1.5, okay? So let's say $1 will be shown as 1.2 euros or $1 will be shown as 2.5 Australian dollars, okay? So you can uh, leave that page. I'll be showing you something else. As you can see here, I'm in my opportunities, right? And my opportunities uh, for the amount, it's showing them as dollars. But when I go and change my settings, Let me change it. Let's say change corporate from here. Now, cur currently my corporate currency is United States dollars. So I'm going to be changing it as Euro. So now my default currency is changed from dollars to euro. Let's come here and let's refresh the page. It will be taking some time. change it from the user also. I'm going to change it from dollar to euro. I'm saving it. Let's refresh this page. As you can see, it's currently showing me also uh, the euro, right? So the default uh, amounts here was 
shown as United States dollars, but in the parentheses, as you can see, it's showing the Euro as well. So this is for the companies who are working with multiple currencies, okay? So this is only to show you how to change, how to make it, because uh, generally the companies, uh, if they are not giant companies like Amazon or uh, the same uh, type of companies, uh, like if they are not international companies, they mostly be using only one currency, but this huge giants, they, they might accept different currencies as well. So also in your user menu, uh, let's go to your user menu. Let me teach you that one as well. Everything about you is stored in user. You don't have to do this, just follow me from the screen. In user, you'll be seeing your name, just click on that one. And in here, your all settings are shown. Like what? Like, let's say your role. Currently mine is not chosen, but my profile is system administrator. And as you can see here, now my current currency is Euro. So I can change it. As you will be remembering, there was a button which Emily showed you. If you create a, or define a new currency for your uh, settings, it will all be shown here. So in my case, I have dollars, British pound, Euro, and Currently, I uh, added this Australian dollar. So both will be, all of them will be shown here. So I, I need to be choosing the default currency that we're using in the company. So again, as you can see here, it was converting them. But since I choose only dollar, you know, it won't have to convert it, okay? So this was about currencies. Okay, done. Let's see the other fields, which we haven't created before. So let's use our teacher object this time, okay? If you don't have teacher object, you can create a empty object or you can use a different object as well. I think I have one. Okay, I'll be using this one. Educa payments. Let me see if there are any fields. There is only, no, there are no fields, different fields. Okay. But I'll be using this one. You can also use either student or if the teacher is empty, just use the teacher. Let's create the other fields which we haven't created before. Let's start with date and time. Choose date and time. Let's say if this is under payment, let's say payment date. And click on next, next. And finally say, save and new. So currency, we have discussed about this one. Email, we already provided. Let's create one geolocation. Okay, Janna, just waiting for you. Now we're creating the geolocation. Click on next.
Candan, I'm using only the payment uh, object. You can use whatever you like. You can use the teacher or you can use the student. I'm just creating new fields only to show uh, how to create those fields. So it's not important which object that you're working on, okay? Uh, for the date time, I said payment date. You can use payment date, okay? Now, this is geolocation. For the geolocation, let's say exact location. Yes, sure, Mehmet Akif, you can use whichever object you like. This is only to show how to create that field and how it functions. Later on, you can also delete those fields. We won't be using them. This is only to show how those fields are working and how they are created. So for the geolocation, you can call it location as well. In here, there are two options. The first says degrees, minutes, and seconds, and the second says decimal. So for geolocation, let me quickly talk about this one. There are two formats, my friends. The first format is like this. It's like an decimal, okay? A decimal number, 40, and then there are some uh, six digit decimals, same here, but these should be given together, okay? So let me draw this one. So actually this information and this information are same, okay? Uh, they only, they are only different in format. So as you can see, this latitude in this format also shown like this. These are degrees, okay? Degrees and minutes. This is a version and this is another version, but they are actually giving us the same location. So in here, we're choosing which one to use. those so actually you can see here it says degrees minutes seconds or you're going to be using decimal so let's say decimal and for the decimal places we can enter six also for geolocation it's not commonly used but let's learn it maybe you, hopefully you will be working in a company. Maybe they can be using geolocation. Okay, after you've finished entering those, just click on next, next, and say save and new. Yes, uh, Nihan, for this, uh, geolocation, it's standard. As you can see here, uh, there are six digits here, okay? After 74, there are six digits. Same for this one as well. Okay. So we created a geolocation. Um, let's say, let's create a percent area percent and here's a brief definition for each of them which is very useful it says allow users to enter a percentage number for example 10 and automatically adds the person signed to the number so we actually know what it is used for so let's for this one payment completion right for the payment completion it will be a percent so for the length and decimal places 
let's say for the decimal two, for the length, let's say four. Or let's say two, it shouldn't be more than two. It should be at most, um, may, or maybe it could be 100%. So let's say three. For the length, use three. For decimal places, use two. Okay. So I'll click on next. Next. Save and new. Okay. Let's have a look at it. So what didn't we create up to this point? Let's create one text area rich or let's first text area long for the field name call it t long or t txt long let's say txt long so that we understand that it will be a text long click on next Next, save and new. And let's create one text area rich. Choose text area rich, click on next. This time let's call this TXT rich. And then click on next. Next, save and new. And let's create one text encrypted. Click on next for the labels, call it txt crypt, crypted txt crypted. This the length parts for the length parts. Let's say if this was a social security number, it should have 12 digits, right? Okay. Now for text encrypted, we have different settings to complete. It says the mask type. Now for text encrypted, it's used for like uh, sensitive information like passwords, or social security numbers, credit card numbers. So for this type, as you uh, all know, that when you receive your bill for your credit card, your credit card number is not shown there, right? There are some dots or uh, asterisks. At the end, maybe you can see only the four last four digits. This is actually working in the same logic. So it asks us, uh, how should I mask the characters? So we can say mask all of them or do it as credit card number uh, standards or social security number standards. But let's say in our case, let's use this one. Last four characters clear, okay? And in here, it asks, uh, how should I mask them with X or asterisks? Let's use which of them? Let's use asterisks, okay? So once you have selected these, it will be showing you uh, how it's gonna be. It's showing you an example, okay? And then click on next, next. Save and new. What else should we, can we create? For URL, let's create one URL. Actually, it's not, uh, doesn't have a format. It will be accepting anything that you're writing here. Even if you don't use the add symbol uh, or HTTP or the other symbols, it's working. It, should, it shouldn't be, but this uh, field type is like that. We can control those kind of things in the future. Uh, we will be learning about this, but at the moment it's only uh, functioning as a text field. But anyhow, let's create one. 
let's say website. Uh, click on next. Next. This time only say save. Okay, let's try our object. Let's go to our application. I use this object. I use the Educa payments. If you use teacher to create those fields, go to teacher, or if it is student, go to student. And let's create our fields or you can follow from my screen it's better than later on you can try yours so the first field we created was called what can you remember what do we call this first field Uh, actually, what uh, data type did we choose while we're creating the, that field? Exactly, date time. So we are learning something new here. So we only created one field, but it brought us two fields because it's date and time. So for the date, let's choose a date and Defaultly, it will be bringing you a time, so you can choose a specific time from here. Okay. So date time brings us two fields. Okay. Now, the second field we created was, what was that data type? What was the data type of that field here? Yes, yes, it was geolocation. So for the geolocation, as in this example, it gives us the USA Vincent Bridge. Let's use this values here. You can copy paste or you can write something, but you should at least have six digits for the longitude. Don't forget the minus because it means a lot in locations. You can find yourself a different part of the world if you miss that point. Okay, this is how geolocation works. So for this field, can anybody remember what type of data we used here? Exactly, it was percentage. So let's say the payment is paid like a quarter of it has been paid. So for if it's a quarter, it means 25%. So once you click on that one, it will be showing you as a percent with the decimals defined. As you can remember, I said, just use the length three and for decimals use two. I can also write it in, as a decimal like 25, 50. Yeah. Okay, for these fields I'm not going to ask it's already we have written on top of them this is a text long so text area is 
limited to some characters, but text long is it can even have more characters like 13,000 characters or something. So in here you can write a novel or you can take huge, uh, let's do not make it so much because on the record field, it will be very ugly. So let's leave it like that. For areas that you are creating, if you need to users to provide input in big amounts, so you, uh, you can choose text long. For text rich, it's uh, different. In text rich, you can format your uh, text in font wise, in color wise, Okay, you can choose different colors. Why I'm unable to choose a color here. Anyhow, let's say, let's change the font. Let's change the font size. I'm going to give this a try again. Okay, I'm choosing green, strange. And now uh, also you can use other word processor elements like alignment. You can even insert uh, images here. Let's put Mr. Mark Benioff here. And for text encrypted, uh, we said this will be a 12 digit number, right? So try to write randomly numbers. But once you reach 12, it won't be letting you enter more. And you will be seeing something when we save this. Okay, for the website or URL, this is in the type of URL, you can write anything. It's actually accepting. Okay, let's save this one and let's have a look at it. Okay, so geolocation is shown like this. For percentage, it was already showing like this. And for the text cryptid, as you can see here, we said mask the eight characters but the last four should be shown. So it's showing us like that. So also for the website, if you enter the valid URL, you will be direct to that URL. Okay. Is everything clear up to this point? How about these fields? Okay, in the weekend session, uh, we will be clearing our uh, objects because we fill them with unnecessary things at the moment. In uh, while we're learning, we are creating new fields. So together we will arrange them in the weekends because we will be having uh, the relationships subject. So for that one, we need to create some specific fields. Good, any questions up to here? Uh, Jandan, uh, actually let's uh, agree on the terms here. So you're calling the, if you call this uh, page, I need to get back to the pre, uh, first lesson because this was not a page as you can see. What do we call these? 
object. Actually, those are objects, Chandan. So if you tell me page, I don't have anything to refer to. Yes, it's a custom object. So instead of calling them pages, just call them custom objects. Yes, exactly, it's a custom object. So you, I think you know how to create a custom object, right? If you tell me, I'm not sure about uh, how to create a custom object, I'll be feeling bad because I taught this in a lesson, like in a session, and it took us like maybe more than an hour or something. So you, you remember how to create custom objects, right? Okay, okay. So you know how to go to object manager and create a new one. And for this one, you don't have to create this one. Okay, Jandan, you don't have to create this uh, Educa payments. I just created here to show you the examples. You don't have to create that one, but keep the students and teachers there. Also, we will be clearing some fields inside of them. Okay, done. Okay, well, let's stop here. This is, uh, as you can remember, Jandan, this, is, uh, this was our structure, right? The app, the tabs, and this is the object. I mean, this is a tab, but in the tab, we have accounts, it's the object, and these are fields and records. And this was a other structure. And we are calling this, as you can see, there are some pages with the boundaries. It, they look like they are like windows, right? So we call them in Salesforce components. So when I tell you the component, you should be understanding this structure. It means let's create a component for the address. That means the fields that we created for address should be shown in something like this, all right? So these structures are called components in Salesforce. And also in the slide, we have how to create an application. We have already seen those. I'll be sharing this on LMS as well. Okay, let's talk about data and time. Today, we already talked about data and time, right? Uh, not only in admin session, also in Apex. We deal, uh, we, we have examples of data and time. So do we all understand what a time zone is? There are different time zones in the world. Nihan says, I'm in European standard time. Yes, great. At least you know why your time, at least you know your time zone. Now, Turkey is three hours ahead of Greenwich Mean Time. And Central European Standard Time is Greenwich Mean Time, and they are one hour ahead of that one. And Eastern Standard Time, oh, okay, you're in Eastern Standard Time. All right, I, I thought it was European, so you're five hours behind the Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, for the Pacific Standard Time, it's eight hours. So what does that mean? Uh, my friends, Salesforce generally stores, not generally, Salesforce exactly stores 
each and every uh, date and time in this time zone. Okay, for let's say you're working in a company, that company wants to announce something to all of its employers. So let's say uh, one of you, is, let's say Jandan is working in Spain, let's say Nihan is in Japan, or let's say Mehmet Akif is in the United States. So you are all in different places in the world, you're working for the same company, and your company wants to announce a event. So they will be uh, announcing that event to Salesforce and Salesforce will record it as Green Meach uh, Mean Time. Okay. This is not mean, this is main. Those are two different ones. So uh, as I said, Salesforce keeps it as Greenwich main time. And when it comes to distributing that message to all of you uh, for, for the employer working in Spain, it will be changing that date to uh, the Spanish time zone, right? For the employer who is in America, it should be converting it to Pacific time. So uh, now we're using Slack and you all know about that, right? Slack is also a product of Salesforce. It's not a different uh, application. You all know that, right? Okay, from uh, Slack, I'll be showing you something. Okay, so in Slack, uh, now our uh, institution, the Tech Pro is uh, announcing the schedules, right? And they are announcing the schedule here. And here is mine. Take a look at this one. It says from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. But this is for my time zone, okay? So let's check yours and let me know what is written on yours. The last message that we received today from in schedule channel. Okay, for Nihan, it says 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. For Gillen, it says 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. For Aisha, it's 7 p.m. Let me check the other channels. How about the situation there? Okay. For Ignor, it's 6 p.m. So what do you think of that? Actually, this message is sent once, but uh, Mehmet Akif received it as 7 to 10. But on the other hand, Jandan received it for 2 to 5. Jandan, I guess you're in Turkey as well. Or something in the same time zone. Right? No, I'm in Turkey, so... Your two to five is a.m. or p.m. Ah, okay. You were reacting to my time. Okay. Yes. In here, it's uh, four thirty in the morning. Uh, so the same thing is happening there. So basically, uh, who send this? message uh, this message is sent from this account and it's only sent once but while distribution it is converted as per your time zone okay so it's uh, received by your end in your time zone so 
it's the best solution, right? If they have written something like that, the event will start in European standard time. So we all need to have to uh, convert it by ourselves or we, we should be checking Google. What, what is the time difference between my time zone and the European uh, Eastern European standard time or something? So same structure is working with the Salesforce as well. So Salesforce keep it as GMT, but it distributes to people as per their timeline. So do we understand this part? All right. Good morning, Nihan. Yeah. Okay, then we have uh, another concept which we have discussed about in the APEC session. We have 24 hours day, uh, time format and the 12 hours time format. In 12 hours time format, we should be using these AM and PMs, right? But on the 24 format, we don't have to use that one. So if it is afternoon one, it's 13 hours. And it's about how to say it is like this. Uh, For 24 hours, you should be calling this 13 hours. But let's say if it was 12 hour format, you should be saying 1 p.m., right? These are both same, but this is in 24 hour format. This is on 12 hour format. Ah, okay. So. I haven't seen that slide. So basically, this is what I was talking about. The Slack example, Salesforce stores the time information as Greenwich main time in the database and displays it to users by converting them to their time zone, OK? We have seen about the geolocation. Okay, we talked about the component. Okay, let's talk about this very briefly. This upper part uh, of the record pages are it's called the highlights panel, okay? This part is called the highlights panel and these are action buttons here, okay? Okay, we completed the fields part. And if you have any questions about the field part, uh, just ask me, we'll discuss about those. Or if you're 
you have any questions about any kind of field. So when I publish this slide, you will be knowing about also how to create the object, how to put it in a tab, how to put it into an application. So with the other group, actually, we barely end the session because our uh, dependent pick list took a while, but in your case, we just get it in one example, so that's good. I'll be giving you homework as well. Uh, how about the previous one? Omni Nihan, uh, one more. Gülin. How about the previous one I send you guys? The last one you cannot, you weren't able to do that before that session, but right now you can do that as well. Uh, there is pick list administration and yes, there is pick list. You, you are capable of doing that one as well. So actually I send you in total of seven different trailhead challenges. Ah, congrats, Jandan. 12 badge and 3,900 points. And still you're asking me how to create an object. That's good. So uh, what is your rank right now? So I think you are trying each and every challenge that you can do, right? Oh, we have a, another contender. Nihan says 17 badges and 750 points. Let me check the other channel. The other channel is sleeping, I guess. They are not writing anything. Uh, Mehmet Akif, uh, the only advice I can give you is like from the more efficient, it's best uh, to go for the challenges that you learned recently. And I can tell you, uh, the hands-on challenges, especially the hands-on challenges that, uh, like there are some hands-on challenges I send also in that homework. It was saying, just create an object with this label and uh, put those fields inside that object, those type of challenges are actually the best practices. And the other thing uh, about those are the point issues. So when you start gaining those points, you're somehow finding yourself in competition with your friends. So right now, everybody is ending on Nihan, I guess, because she said, I have 17 badges. So it also creates a competition, uh, which is a good thing, I can say, because uh, in my uh, batch as well, I remember we have started learning Salesforce and on the third day or something, somebody said, uh, I have like, 20,000 points or something. So we, we were just shocked. But actually, he was uh, trained in Salesforce before. So he was using the trailhead before.
I never heard of that one, uh, rubber duck system. Uh, thank you. Uh, Esma, I'm giving uh, homework. Uh, if you can see the homework channel. Now, there are seven topics in that one. The first one I sent uh, has four uh, trailhead challenges. And uh, later on, I sent another tree. But this tree, uh, you weren't able to do that tree before that session. But right now, you can do those as well. OK? So your homework is here right now. The last tree, you can do it because it was about pickless administration. It's about the uh, dependencies as well. So each and every all, uh, subject we finished, I'll be giving you the challenges, but uh, I don't want, I don't want to uh, send it here and uh, let it stay there. Uh, it's better for all of you to compl complete these challenges because uh, you're all adults. I cannot check whether you have done your homework and it's for your own sake. I recommend you all uh, complete those challenges. Trailhead is the best place that you can practice Salesforce. I'll be checking that one, Mehmet Akif. Maybe it's something I know. Maybe, uh, maybe the naming is not uh that doesn't ring me a bell rubber duck maybe i know about that so nihan is offering you help nihan says i i can show you how to use it and there are some Cases, uh, I will not be recommend you to do. Okay, working in a collaboration is good, but when it comes to making those kind of challenges, try to do it yourself. Uh, I have seen people like gathering, uh, 10 people are gathering, uh, getting together and 10 of them are trying to do the same thing. And it is generally something like that. Three of them is... Uh, capable of doing that one the other uh, the rest of the team is just doing exactly what they are doing without knowing the logic or without understanding how did they solve it so for these things if you get stuck in at some point you can always ask you can always even ask in the uh, classroom in our sessions but uh, try mostly to do it by yourself Uh, yes, Janna. Um, but let's give it a time. Uh, after like um, two or three months, you will be having the information that you can give a speech about Salesforce easily. Can we see real life Salesforce company page? Actually, Gulin, you are looking at the exact page. They are using exactly this pages. It's not different from those that we are using. The only difference is maybe they have their own data. Now we are using the same similar, uh, the same data. These are generic data. Let's say for the opportunities. Each and every one of us have these, right? But they have the real data, but the user interface, the other things, they are exactly the same. Uh, no. I'm not working for another company right now. 
No, no problem. It's not a problem to ask. I'm not working for another company. Uh, uh, I've been working since 1999 and I've never had two jobs at the same time. I always worked in full positions. This is not a full position, but uh, I'm uh, choosing to do one because in some cases, uh, like let's say if you're an instructor, if you have another job out of this one, I don't think you can provide your best. And that's why. So I'm not going any further because with the previous group, we ended the session in here. So uh, the joint session, we will uh, be learning about the relationships, which is a very important subject. So I urge you all to join the session Thank you, thank you all for the session as well. We have learned, if we learn new things, I'm happy as you all are. Great done. We have still two minutes to go. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Anything you are wondering? I saw uh, one of you, but I'm not. I cannot remember exactly who. But uh, somebody who started new was asking about the certification exam questions. All I can tell you is right now it's very soon to prepare for the certification exam. Uh, you should be at least two two months. Uh, you should have at least two months of experience. Like uh, I mean, not the experience. Two months of practice in Salesforce. You should be joining these sessions for two months at least to get into a position to enter the uh, administrator certificate. But right now, as I said, it's too soon. So don't focus on the certification exam right now, just focus on the subjects. Uh, okay, can't you, uh, you cannot see the homework, uh, the other channel. Let me share it with you as well. Okay, everyone, if you don't have any questions, today's session is over. I thank you all. And I wish you all a great evening, great day. Okay, thank you guys, bye. Thank you.